everyone, and greetings from Luxembourg. I'm Christina Mosher Turner, and I am the editor of Horn and More, the IHS digital newsletter. Uh, today, we have a very special video interview with horn player Yuka Haryu from Finland. And uh, Yuka's a great guy. He wears a lot of different hats in his life. Not only is he principal horn of the Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra, but he is also a teacher. He's a composer, and as you'll learn in this interview, he does a lot of other amazing things. So, uh, Yuka, are you with us? Can you hear me? Hello, Christina. Helsinki calling. Thanks for this opportunity to make this video for you. Uh, this is all based on improvisation, so I wish I could give you an impression about the horn playing in these northern latitudes. Um, as you can see, Helsinki is getting darker, already. So let's go a little bit further north to see how it is there. Wow, that was really beautiful. Thank you so much, Yuka, for sharing that with us. Uh, would you also mind sharing with us a little bit about your early musical career? Uh, this is Kokkola, and this is my house where I grew up when I was a child. And I'm now running with my daughter around the house. I studied with Sakari Lamberi, a trombone player here in Kokkola, and later I went to Helsinki uh, Sibelius Academy Youth Department with Kalerva Kulmala. I went on to the international youth orchestras like uh, Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra and uh, European Union Youth Orchestra and uh, then I quit. I started to suffer a severe tinnitus which took away my dreams to become a musician for seven years. I was studying in a university for technology, some uh, electric engineering and uh, technical physics. And at the end, I graduated as a film director. Then I started to work. First in Tampere Philharmonic Orchestra, then Helsinki Philharmonics, and uh, the last 10 years in uh, Finnish Radio Symphony Orchestra. And this all has uh, brought me some opportunities to play as a soloist as well.
Ah, and here is also our section. Mikäs täällä on kokkaillessa, kun ei enää musiikkia? Bravo! Our dear hobby. There has never been such a crazy idea not worth trying. Hello? You play? If you play, make a bananas. Just one look at yes, you. I like it. And I know it's gonna be a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. My goodness, that's a, quite a collection there. Um, you also teach at the Sibelius Academy at the University of Arts in Helsinki, and you give master classes all over the world, really. Um, just wondering if you could tell us a bit about your philosophy of teaching, and if you think that things like musicianship, for instance, can be taught. In some point, I started to sketch the problematics of being a musician with a triangle. There is um, technical issues, a substance, and uh, the third one is uh, performing skills. The, the technical skills, they are driven the horn schools for hundreds of years to perform anything. We need to have the tool on, under a control. Playing music is uh, like playing stories. To the audience. There is um, a bit less uh, discussion about the substance because it's a more abstract thing and uh, it asks quite a lot of time and thinking and also maybe some kind of self-knowledge and understanding. Then the third one, the performing skills. It has been uh, on the table last couple of decades and um, if you are uh, like uh, over emphasizing to the performing situation, the playing starts to be like a show off. And it's away again from the substance. How to balance these three things? I think that's the question of being a master of performing arts. The world of theories is beautiful, but uh, reality can be colder. So we need some uh, humanity and warmth as well. Those amazing pedagogues I have met, they seem to share a couple of uh, common factors together. One of those is the ability to be present with the people and with the students, and also the will to spend time with them. The other one is uh, the enthusiasm and passion for what they are doing, which makes them like an example for us. Then they are capable for multidimensional thinking and they also have vocabulary for, for sharing those ideas with us. And um, at the end, I think the world is full of answers and advice, but uh, it might be even more important to be able to set the right questions. I love it. That's great. That covers so much ground. Um, well, we've been talking about performance a little bit and the importance of it. Uh, I want to ask you about your own composition, Horn Hounds, that you performed together with Tanya Nisonen in Gand at IHS 51. And you even were wearing a dog mask. Now, can you tell us what that was all about? 
What's the source of your inspiration for that? Do you have a dog? I mean, what's, what's up with the dog thing? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Because we used to have cats at home. And maybe I was even a little bit afraid of dogs until I get to know two very playful tiger boxers. And actually at the time when I was writing the piece, I was also doing a short film where the key character was a tiger boxer. I thought that I would write something as a modern piece to my own diploma to, to break the, the, the rule and um, also to get some fresh Finnish music for horn. There was not much such and I'm uh, excluding now Esa-Pekka Salonen's concert Etude, which is a really top quality piece. Um, it is actually written exactly at the same time than Hornhounds. Four years later I was uh, participating in Geneva competition and I did a version of this duo to uh, horn and piano and uh, I played in a recital round there. So what else have you composed? Do you just write for horn or have you also been writing for other instruments? Mainly I write for horn because I'm a horn player, I know the instrument so it's very natural. But when not, I love to try very weird combinations of uh, uh, instruments, like in this ensemble. The piece is Departures for clarinet, uh, bassoon, violoncello and percussions. This piece is um, Northern Waters. It's a large song cycle for uh, soprano, violin, horn and piano. Then there is some stuff for horn arrangements as well and right now I'm working with the Max Bruce music so keep an ear out for things to come. Um, it's very interesting something that many of our listeners may not realize is that you also graduated as a film director and um, I was just wondering how you were able to combine your studies at film together with music if the two have any influence on each other and how you've been able to combine those in your life. You choose either or, but uh, to do both at the same time it's, it's impossible because both are very time intensive uh, professions. Well, there is not really a lot that I can really grab and take to my horn playing, but uh, it goes back to the time of Aristotle and the shape of a story and actually it draws a line and what was very interesting for me that the same kind of a picture was formed for the Viennese sonata form for the music and for the film they both work in relation to a time so that means that uh, we don't we don't see the whole puzzle at the same time but we are operating with the memory of the audience and expectations. So that makes actually the substance of making music really, really interesting. So Joke, since you are the IHS country representative for Finland, can you show us something typically Finnish perhaps? Welcome to Finnish sauna. This is a place where Everything starts and everything ends. Uh, mothers used to give the birth for the babies here and uh, the death bodies were brought here to be cleaned up before the funerals. We weekly have this ritual to wash ourselves physically and mentally as well. 
It's a good place to meditate a little bit. And actually there is something in common to be in the sauna and to be on stage. It's pretty hot here. You, you are sweating. You feel like you are naked. You have to accept that uh, people can watch you. You have no masks. You, you, you are just what you are, honestly. This is how Finnish national landscape looks like, and uh, it has been caught by painter Akseli Kallen Kallela on his production in many various ways. At the same time, in uh, approximately uh, 130 years ago, also the sound of Finland was born and by Sean Sibelius. When we are talking about horn playing, Holger Franzmann is our grandfather. He was studying in Vienna 1930s and he brought to Finland the Viennese Horn School. The Finnish Horn Society was found in 1973 and it belongs to one of the oldest instrumental societies in northern countries. We have approximately 200 members and two gatherings per year and the focus is on young horn players which means that young generation of horn players in Finland is very strong. In 2023 the Finnish Horn Club will turn 50 years and uh, we have planned to organize the Nordic Horn Symposium then in Finland. Ten years earlier on the 40th anniversary we did a little video with the Finnish horn players. Here you can see an example of it. exciting to come and join you for the 2023 Nordic Horn Seminar and to experience all this in person. Uh, Yuka, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for this wonderful interview Thanks. and it's been a real pleasure to talk to you, get to know you a little bit better and to kind of share what you've been up to with our listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina and IHS for this opportunity to make this video and of course thanks for watching this. See you in Finland 2023.